Like people say that motherhood should be an Olympic sport and I totally agree. Officially doing homeschool in like the next couple weeks or so. God is good. Our last few days have just been incredible to say the least. And you know, we say this a lot that scripture is meant to be experienced. And um, it's through the experiencing that you can, you know, try the spirit, by the spirit, get clarity, and all those things. We've been doing that, um, and it's it, it's beautiful to see the results. So, yeah, my bad. I'm just I'm just in a um, I'm just in a place, in a really good place, a reflecting place. You want golden chick? Nah, I don't want golden chick. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> we've been making we're finally getting the homeschool room together so I'm about to show y'all our progress so far also don't mind my voice I just woke up clearly <laughs> So I think we'll be ready to start our homeschool actual curriculum next week. I think I'll be ready. I was looking through all of my curriculum yesterday to just kind of get an idea of like what 
we need to be prepared for at least for like the first week and the good and the beautiful curriculum is seriously a open and go curriculum and I had read that multiple times before I actually bought the curriculum but it didn't really click to me because I still kept thinking that I was going to have to get like a homeschool planner and like I was going to have to like prep all these things before the week you know what I mean and like set aside like a couple hours or something each week to like prepare for the week and I realized when I was actually flipping through the books and the course books that I really don't have to do that like I might need to gather like a few items as far as like little things like some puffs and some seeds for them to do like little simple counting activities for but outside of that there's really no preparation needed they literally give you a script okay so even if you don't know nothing about language arts nothing about math okay they literally tell you read this to your child and you read it and then you have the child complete the activity or the lesson and that's it it's literally open and go and i was like oh my gosh this is so much easier than I even thought it was going to be because I was still kind of like in my head like thinking I was going to have to do all this stuff and I really don't and so that just was like a relief that I had yesterday. I was like wow like I'm, I'm excited about this but I'm also like very prepared and it didn't even require me to do a lot to be very prepared for this. So I'm excited to actually dive into the curriculum because now it's really up to whether or not the curriculum is going to be effective and, you know, if my kids are going to like it. So we will see when we start next week or the week after if the curriculum is as good as everybody says it is because all the reviews I've seen has said that their kids love the curriculum. So I'll keep y'all posted. Oh, I need more creamer. Micah, what are you doing in there? You picked up all your mag your magnet tiles, right? Good job, Micah. Yeah. You gonna okay. go play? Okay, you gotta build the house. Oh, you gotta build the house. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Oh, oh don't worry. So I got these black baskets. They're actually laundry baskets on Amazon, but I love like the wood finishing on the yeah, handles. So I got one for both children so they can put like their morning and like just daily activity stuff in them. And that'll be how we store them here in the homeschool room because it'll be separate than like their actual toys in the playroom. Okay. Hey, MJ. Hi. Uh. Getting back into the swing of things after having a baby always comes with a bit of anxiety. At least for me, it does. And this time around, I am just now kind of getting back into like work things with her and uh oh there's an ambulance up here uh oh what happened up here a wreck uh oh fire truck out here the police out here oh goodness oh, oh everybody okay golly okay everybody's all right they're outside the they're outside the car talking it's probably a little fender bender or something but I always get a little bit of anxiety of getting back into, into the swing of things, especially because many times, whatever I'm doing, I have to have her with me. I have to bring her with me, wear her, or have someone else with me. So literally, like last week, I spoke at an event at a women's brunch, and Mark came with me to have Emery there, and there was a point in the event where I literally had to walk off the stage to go nurse Emery because she started crying. 
And because it was a women's brunch, I was like, you know what? They'll understand. They're all women, moms, you know, wives and everything. And I felt a little awkward doing that. I felt a little bad because I'm like, I hope I don't, you know, interrupt anyone's experience because I'm like literally walking off the stage and I'm like sitting on the panel. But I do a lot of positive self-talk and I tell myself like, look, like your first priority is always going to be your family and everything else comes after that. And that includes literally when you are sitting on a stage with a mic and your daughter starts crying and she needs you like I'm gonna hop off that stage you know what I mean and so that's how I've come to be but it still carries a little bit of of just like I don't know like I, I think it's anxiety a little bit but it's not nearly as much as I used to have and I know that there's moms out there that still struggle like heavily with like feeling like your child is an interruption or a burden of some sort and I have really dealt with that a lot especially having kids literally four kids back to back in five years it has drastically changed my mindset and my priorities in my life obviously but today I'm headed to a business meeting and I didn't tell him that I'm bringing my baby, but he knows that I just had a baby. We've actually had to push this meeting off for months because I first met up with him in March and at an event, and it was literally the last event that I went to before really being essentially on bed rest for my third trimester, which I did not anticipate. But I was just so exhausted in my third trimester that there was no way I was doing anything. And I had planned like, I mean, three or four different events, meetups, things of that nature, coffee dates and whatnot with people that I had to cancel. And I felt a way about that because I did not anticipate that being my reality because I never got that tired with any of my other kids. It probably had something to do with being pregnant and running after three little ones, but needless to say, I had planned a meeting with him back then for like April, I think. I was due in May, so we had to push that. I pushed it to June, which I was like, you know, she'll be born in May. June, I should be okay to like get back out there. I was not ready yet, um, so I had we had to push it again. And actually, we had to push it again because I wasn't even in the mindset of checking my calendar yet. So he texted me, I think the day of when we were supposed to meet and I didn't see his text and I didn't answer it for hours. And he was like, are we still on for today? And I was like, oh my God, like no. And I had totally forgot about this. I'm so sorry. So we ended up pushing it another month. So literally we're meeting today and it's August. <laughs> um, but we're making it happen. I'm driving there now. And so I, you know, it happens. Stuff like that happens. And I told myself, you know, after I have Emery, I'll make my rounds to all the people that I had to cancel on back in the spring. And, you know, it is what it is. And obviously, I'm bringing Emery with me. Um, and it's like, I have to tell myself, like, I, I say in my head, I hope this isn't an inconvenience that she's with me. I hope that he doesn't mind. I hope, and then I have to stop myself. Because again, it's like, my child is not a burden or a disturbance. She is a gift and she is me. And so she's going to be with me. That's my first priority always. And he's a dad too. And his wife, I believe, is expecting as well. They already have a, a child, obviously. Um, he's a dad already. So I know he'll get it. And that's what I, you know, tell myself so that I don't get too nervous and I don't overthink it because I don't want my anxiety to build just because, like, I'm in my head about it. But I also got invited to two different brand events for next week and the week after actually three different things so the first thing is next week I'm doing a photo shoot with Boss Women Media I'm a part of their founding class for their boss class membership and I'm sure I'll share more about that with you all very soon um, because it's just the beginning stages obviously I'm part of the founding group so we're just getting things started but I have a photo shoot for that next week at 8 a.m. across town which is gonna be like an hour drive so I'm gonna have to get up early I'm gonna have to get myself together 
I'm trying to figure out if Mark is going to come with me or if my sister is going to come with me because Emery has to come. And obviously, Emery can't be on me in the photo shoot. So it should only take about an hour, they said. So I just need somebody to be with me so they can literally hold Emery. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm having to like, you know, make those sorts of decisions and adjustments to what I'm doing, which is, you know, being just mindful of, of what the scenario, what the environment's going to be like and how can I get support to make sure that Emery is good and the other kids are covered too. Like somebody is there to watch them and everything at home while I'm out. So, you know, it, it used to feel like a lot to like maneuver that but now you know I'm used to it so it's not as much of a you know hassle or a thing every time so yeah so that's that's one then I got two event invitations for next week where one is for cover girl they're doing an event um literally this the same day as the photo shoot and the photo shoot I can do because it's in the morning and it's just a photo shoot but I really can't do the cover girl event because the cover girl event is like an activation like I think it's gonna be like some sort of um, golf like thing I don't know the the invitation was a little vague but there's gonna be like activities and cocktails and like meet and greet kind of like environment there's gonna be like socializing and playing with products and things like that obviously you know it pretty much sounds like a standard like brand event um, which I've been to plenty of over the years but I know also that it that is not a baby friendly environment and yeah, so that one I'm unfortunately having to decline because it's just not a good time for me to be going to something like that um, because I can't leave Emory, you know. So that one I had to decline, unfortunately, but I got invited to another event uh, for a brand that I haven't had a interaction with yet. I'll be meeting them for the first time, but it's called Gap and they are a mobile device company that has dumb phones essentially for kids and teenagers who have parents that don't want them to have like full access to the internet and things like that from like a protective measure so so they're hosting a lunch so I'm probably gonna have Mark come with me to that event or if he needs to stay with the kids if my sister can't watch the kids then I'll ask one of my other friends to join me on that because I can't have a plus one and it's a seated lunch event so that's definitely more kid friendly than the cover girl event and also it's clearly a brand that is all about you know healthy family dynamics with technology and clearly it's a family environment um, so I know that they'll be fine with me bringing the baby, but I did have my management reach out and just give them a heads up that that would be the case for me, that I would need to bring Emery with me to attend and that I would need a plus one. And they said that was totally fine. They just need my plus one's name. So yeah, so I'm going to confirm with them as soon as I figure out who's gonna actually come with me on that day and then I'm excited. So I'm excited about that one. I'll actually be able to go to that event, but you know, these things pop up and I have to figure out how I'm going to, you know, manage my family obligations, obviously, and then work. So yeah, so I'm hoping that this meeting goes well. I'm excited to get to just actually talk to another adult about business things because I do miss that and uh, just getting out of the house, you know, and not having any of the other kids with me. Emery is like the easy one right now. So as long as she's with me, she's chill. So yeah, so it should be a good meeting and I will check back in with y'all in a bit.
It's that time, y'all. The postpartum hair loss is getting real. You would think that with this being my fourth postpartum era that it would get easier to handle and accept this place that is inevitable. But when I took them braids down, I was not prepared. And at first I'm detangling my hair and I'm thinking some of those pieces of human hair that were like in my braids must have gotten caught in my own hair because there's no way I'm losing like fully full hairs, like long hairs, not like broken off hair, like full length hair. So of course I saved my bundle of hair that came out of my head, okay? So we're just gonna have a moment together and we're going to say a prayer, <laughs> say farewell, and leave this moment here, okay? Because I'm not going to allow it to follow me outside of this bathroom because if it follows me outside of this bathroom, I will be in a bad headspace, okay? So we're going to release it here. We're going to acknowledge it here and it'll be done. Are you ready? Yeah. This came out of my head in one sitting. One detangling session after having braids in. When I tell you I'm detangling and I'm just like gathering, okay? And I'm being so gentle because I know this is part of the process. I know this. So I'm coaching myself as I'm detangling my hair to be as gentle as possible because I'm trying to keep the hair that I can keep intact. Let's see the edges, okay? Now look, we're okay. This is scary. This is very scary, okay? Your postpartum shedding is going to look scary, but it's not all of your hair. It may be some of your edges, but it's not all of your hair and hair grows back. That is the thing that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know, is that the hair grows back. Now, our edges, a little sparse, a little, a little sparse, but they're not terrible. We're not completely bald, okay? And granted, I'm only 10 weeks out. Usually for me, it's about month four when I notice heavy shedding like this, but it's coming a little bit early this time. So maybe this is the worst of it. Prayerfully, child, hopefully, Lord Jesus, this is the worst of it. This is the end of it. I'll keep y'all posted. But if this ain't it, I already have a game plan, okay? My game plan is I'm gonna start taking the hair supplements that helped me the last two times, okay, to grow my hair back, which was the Viviscal hair supplements. Those really worked for me and I took them postpartum, a, maybe a, a two or three months postpartum, like literally after birth with both. I might've started them earlier last time i can't remember i can't remember but i took them for at least three months three four months both times and i saw significant hair growth okay this time i'm not taking them because i've been on a supplement regimen that i feel like is helping me because really at the end of the day postpartum hair loss is because happens because of your lack of nutrients in your body that baby took everything okay almost everything all right and so a lot of times in postpartum it's hard for us to re-up those nutrient reserves in our body and so that's what 
is causing a lot of the hair loss. Now, some of it is shedding because you didn't go through like a shed process when you were pregnant. You just went through a growth process or whatever in your pregnancy. So shedding in general is, is going to happen, but I'm talking about hair loss, all right? There's a difference and you know for yourself what that looks like, right? So for me, I know that some of my hair loss was, and probably all of my hair loss was because I wasn't getting enough nutrients in my body the last two times, which the Viviscal supplements are really nutrient dense. They're not a drug. Like they're not just biotin. It's biotin and amino blend. So it has like essential aminos that you need for protein building in your body. Those supplements have some of that type of ingredient in them, which your hair has protein in it. So it's like those supplements aid the processes that happen to have your hair, your skin, and your nails grow. So that's what it's doing. It's putting back into your body what it needs to have those processes fully functioning correctly. It's not like a magic pill or anything. It's literally not even something that is like super revolutionary. It's actually looking at your hair loss as a symptom of a larger issue, which is the lack of nutrients in your body and it attacks the nutrient problem, not necessarily the hair problem, but that's how they market the product because that's the real deal result that you'll see if you put more nutrients in your body, your body will function the way it's supposed to and those processes like your hair, skin and nails growing will kickstart and keep going the way it's supposed to. Hey baby. Yeah. So luckily we still have a lot of fullness I do feel a difference in the thickness of my hair for sure, but it's not enough to like scare me or anything. And the way my hair is laying, I can cover my edges that are still a little, like this side is actually not bad at all, really. It's really this side that I've got some like, like that right there is a little questionable. <laughs> mom in for real and this is normal for me at this point <laughs> finding ways to juggle having not just one baby or one kid but having multiple children with me at a time while also trying to get some work done trying to get my thoughts together multitasking like people say that motherhood should be an Olympic sport and I totally agree because the amount of of endurance, okay, and strength it takes to, to do all of this all the time. We all deserve a gold medal, okay? We all deserve a gold medal. Every single parent out there. Anyway, remember that project that I talked about in the first vlog in the sum this summer? So this was like seven vlogs ago I don't know and I asked y'all for prayer I'm asking again for your prayers because I'm still working on this project I am going to start having my team reach out to a few of my brand partners that I could see doing this thing with me and I'm nervous, okay? I'm nervous about pitching. I'm nervous about whether this is the format in which it 
should be done in and I know I'm talking vaguely because I'm supposed to be vague still I'm not supposed to fully reveal everything yet but I know that the core mission of what I'm doing is what God has told me to do and I know it's what I'm supposed to do it's just sometimes I get stuck in the weeds of how to do the thing how to get the assignment done and because I have all these different ideas and ways that I could see something come to life, to be able to pinpoint God's vision for the thing and not all of my other ideas can get difficult at times because God made us with all these gifts and these ways that we can get things done and all these different ways of getting something done isn't always his way. Sometimes he actually just doesn't necessarily care how it gets done as long as the thing gets done, right? Like as long as we're obedient to the task, however we got to get there, we got to get there, right? So I also think about that, like, oh God, okay, am I asking you, not am I asking God too many questions because I know he'll give me the plan, like step by step, right? I know that. But at the same time, it's like, am I overcomplicating it in my head? Like, I start to plan things and ideate things out and I have all these ideas, like I said, and then it's like, girl, just simplify and go. Like, that's something that Mark always says he got from, uh, okay, little burp. Something that he got from when he was working at Nike was just like, simplify and go. Like, simplify the idea and just run with it. Because a lot of times we can spend hours and hours and hours on something. You want to open it? We can spend hours and hours and hours on something and in all actuality, it's like, girl, just get it done. Like, just do the thing. Because I think in a lot of ways and maybe even in this scenario that I'm even in right now, it's like the Lord just wants me to execute so that he can get the next thing ready for me. Like, not necessarily that this season doesn't matter or this project doesn't matter, but it's like, we think that the assignment that we have right now is the end goal, but it could be the beginning of something more. It could be the thing that switches the trajectory of our lives, whether it be personally or professionally, that he needs us to just take the step to do the thing because it's really just part, and it's always, right? Just part of the larger story at hand of our lives and I'm just I'm trying to stay level-headed <laughs> like not do you see what I mean when I say getting stuck in the weeds like I'm not even just talking about the weeds of like organizing and researching I'm talking about the weeds of my brain okay the weeds of like what this could be and what this ain't you know whatever so I need your prayers for clarity, for direction. And like I said in that first initial vlog, which was, I want God to be the one that leads the idea and the execution. That is my same prayer now. So if you would join me in that prayer, I would so appreciate it. Because yeah, y'all, I'm just trying to be led in all things. And I'm, I'm doing a lot right now. I love everything I'm doing though, which is also so interesting, crazy, awesome, daunting, all at the same time, is I'm trying to maintain a very nutrient dense relationship with God. What do I mean by that? Meaning I am feeding that relationship on a daily basis. I am paying attention to it. I am nurturing that relationship as an individual because it starts with me right making sure i keep that intact making sure that i am also sowing seeds and nurturing gardening my marriage gardening my relationships speaking of marriage priorities okay micah hey baby look there's sarai Hey, I gotta go, baby. I'll see you when you get home, okay? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Whew. Anyway, 
you know, trying to do all the things and be all the things for everybody. So yeah, y'all, you, you already know what it is when you're trying to mom and boss at the same time. All right, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's worth it because it's all for them. At the, oh, you okay? Oh boy, it's all for them at the end of the day, right? It's all for you. It's all for you. You, my baby. I do it all for you. You know that? You know that, Emery? I do it all for you and your brothers and sisters. I do. I do. I do. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. Mom, Look at that pretty girl.